Hello and thank you for watching this screencast. My name is Andras Tantos and in this uh, short video I will show you how to use the Cray1 simulator that I wrote in interactive mode. Here you can see uh, the system fully booted. Uh, you can watch another video of how to get to this point. You have the three serial terminals attached to the three I.O. Uh, processors and the one uh, station terminal that displays uh, you the, uh, the the boot messages and the last one that you see here is the startup complete telling you that the system is operational. Before we uh, start with interactive mode let's start another uh, couple of consoles. What this does is that this brings up additional serial terminals in the real hardware uh, attached to the I.O. subsystem, which are uh, additional displays uh, connected to the same session to the mainframe, so you can think of them as early version of multi-monitor support. What's interesting though is that each of them have a command prompt and a keyboard attached to them, so you can have different commands running in each of them. So one thing that we can do here is to start the monitor to monitor the CPU usage, for example, and here we can start, uh, for example, a status command that will show you the job queue. So before we can start any interactive or other jobs, we will have to enable the normal job class. We will do that with the class or on command. This will actually enable all the job classes and we will have to set the limit of the number of jobs uh, running on the system to something other than zero, so let's say it's five. At this point we're almost ready to start our interactive job. Uh, what we will have to do though first is to start something called an interactive concentrator. This concentrator is uh, a little bit of software that connects the stations, which are these, to the mainframe. Normally uh, these stations would run on another mainframe or a mini computer somewhere in a different room connected through network to the mainframe. In our case the station software is running on the I.O. processors and everything is local. So we will have to start an interactive version of the concentrator and the way we do that is in the I.O. kernel window we type in IEIOP log which now starts the interactive concentrator and logs it in. You can even see a message about that, that now the interactive concentrator uh, has been uh, connected to the system. So at this stage we can start an interactive session by st starting it. The IECON command is the one to do that. There we go. Now we have the interactive prompt here again we will have to re-establish uh, the connection uh, to the mainframe. We do that with the logon command and the uh, system greets us uh, with stating its version and build date. You can also see that our interactive job is entered the job queue and is executing. So, at this point, uh, you see that the logon uh, command didn't establish any identity, we just established a connection. So, in order to identify ourself, uh, we, ourselves, we have to use the account command. Uh, C equals Cray, for example, and every command uh, will have to be terminated by a dot. Remember that, it's important. All right, so now that we established our identity, we can start issuing uh, commands to the system. There aren't that many interactive uh, applications and even less that are available to us at this point. But one, thing, uh, one application that is available is the interactive editor, so we can start that. This resides, the, the, the binary image resides on the IO uh, processors hard drive, so first we will have to transfer it to the mainframe, and we do that with the fetch command. We identify the data set as Teddy, 
and we do some other incantations that aren't terribly important at this point and we give it the location on the uh, on the IO processor hard drive which is there again terminate with a dot you will soon see here that uh, we transfer the, there we go we transfer that particular data set into the mainframe it's done we get a message saying that yes it's actually transferred properly so now we can start it and now the the editor starts the first thing it asks us is a data set name we'll just give it a name data set is the equivalent of files here so we just give it a name let's say it's test enter and now we entered uh, the interactive editor here you can use the question mark to list the commands that are available and you can use like I question mark to get more information on that particular command it says information so let's try that not surprisingly the file is empty so there's not much that it can display and you can quit the editor by typing in and and now the the editor terminated you can see the change of the prompt telling you that now we are back to the operating system prompt Thank you again for watching this. This concludes this presentation. I hope you enjoyed it.